So I'm, uh, thanks for, for the, and, and John for the invitation. I'm uh, from the Rensselaer Polytechnic Institute, from a group called the Tetherless World Constellation. I'll tell you a little bit about that. I also have an adjunct science appointment at the Woods Hole Oceanographic Institution and do a lot of work with the Marine Biology Lab uh, Data Library, Food Library. And I, we, I wasn't given explicit instructions, so um, <laughs> I just should be I, I put together I put together a few slides and. Um, I'm going to tell you about curriculum developments. It's data science. You'll see, and you'll see where this comes from. And this thing here, I decided about a year and a half ago. I think at the Research Data Workforce Summit before the Digital Curation Conference, we had a had a meeting in Chicago, and I talked to then about uh, what, what I call the Day One Initiative. So I've been at RPI almost four years now, and um, one of the things that I, that I was asked to do when I went there was to sort of create a new curriculum, just teach something completely new. So that's what I did. And so I'm going to, I'll, I'll sort of relate a little bit of experience about the days after the day one initiative. About our constellation, um, this is sort of a standard slide that, that I use. We're organized around three research themes. Um, so the other two, uh, the constellation is three uh, senior professors, tenured, and then our chairs. Jim Pandluck, who's one of the sort of founders of the semantic web, Deborah McGinnis as well. Myself, and we were arranged around these three major research themes the future of the web, ex informatics, and foundations of uh, semantics. And you'll sort of see right in the middle there data science, semantic science, ex informatics, and data frameworks is really at, very much at the heart of our research. But um, research without education and education without research at a modern technical university is really not very effective. And so, really, what I'm going to just tell you a little bit about is that core part of that. Um, um, that research and education theme there. And we have uh, the interesting thing about our constellation is that we're in multiple departments, it's actually four different departments and two different schools in the university. And so we have a very significant reach across the campus and that shows up in the uh, demographics of our classes. But aligned with it, and I, I think the theme I'm going to bring you, and it actually follows from what Kirk has said, um, we also have application themes who are very much rooted in the application of modern data science and web science and, and, and other areas of computer science in three primary areas, government data, especially open government data, environmental informatics, which is the area that I'm involved in now, and then healthcare and life sciences. And these are all data intensive. It's just, it's, it's fundamental um, to make progress in any of these fields. And what we've found actually is that the students now, of course, have realized that as well. They've really realized it as well. And um, they're sort of flooding into our classes from all over the place. But not sort of out of, I'm really curious about data. I'm, they're really curious about environmental data. They're really, really curious about um, you know, uh, medical record data. So they've always got the something data. And I think that's, um, that's really an important point. And, and when we've structured our Offerings is sort of along those lines. Um, also at RPI, probably is worth um, note, noting is that there is a larger activity on campus. We have a data science research center, which was formed a couple of years ago. Um, a colleague of mine, Bill Wood-Henner, is the, is the director of that, and I was involved in forming that. And we're just in the process of forming a data science education center, which actually touches the entire school. Uh, not the entire school, the entire institute. <coughs> and it covers engineering, architecture, humanities, and so on. Um, and in that data science research center, we've got over 35 research faculty, five postdocs, and I'm not quite sure how many grad students involved in this. And it's really a, sort of a really interesting activity. RPI has this expression, which um, when, when I was interviewing there, I thought was a recruiting technique. Um, they said, we have low walls. and. Uh, after a while, after the fourth person said it, they said, is this a recruiting technique? And they said, no, it's actually really true. And the low walls means you're actually, you're given incentives to collaborate across departments and across schools. Um, and, and it really makes a big difference. And, and data, uh, in the Rensselaer plan, which is our strategic plan, data and computing is one of our major thrusts. Of sitting alongside biotechnology, nanotechnology, energy environment, and experimental media and performing arts. And so there's a real high level attention to it. The other key thing is that, that in the 
last couple of years, we've hired a new vice president for research, who some of you may know, Fran Berman, away from San Diego Supercomputer Center. And Jim Myers, who's the director of our supercomputing center, we hired him away from uh, NCSA. So the, these are very well-known data people in the field. So let me, th this is a, a diagram that I've adapted from a couple of other diagrams like it. <coughs> and um, when, I, when I teach this in um, our classes, I usually spend about 30 to 35 minutes going over this diagram. I'm not going to do that here. But I want to, um, um, yeah, I'm standing directly in your way. No, 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 no. <laughs> um, it's, it's useful for this particular purpose because it, um, first of all, the, one of the first things I tried to do is to destroy the myth that there's a linear flow between data information and knowledge. And that, to me, is wrong. It's actually an ecosystem, and that the overlaps between data and information and information and knowledge and the attributes which help define when data is data especially with this large my screen contextual box. And this is sort of a fundamental thing that we teach, is it, people get confused about what data is and what information is, so we pull it all apart. And you have to pull it apart if you're going to teach sort of underlying principles to students that they can carry forward and carry with them, rather than just sort of leaving it as this fuzzy concept. So um, we go into a great amount of detail, and you can sort of see at the bottom there, you can really tell. Our, our primary, um, our constellation, our primary um, education offerings are data science, ex-informatics, semantic e-science, and web science. And it sort of schematically follows this pattern. And the blue ellipses sort of show you the <coughs> domain and range, if you like, of the material. So data science is very much about the data piece, but it, of course, overlaps information. Information, ex-informatics is about primarily information science, information systems architecture. And then semantic and science is about the knowledge piece. Um, and I'll say I'll sort of say a few words um, about that. Or maybe I should say now the, the type of students we're attracting, as you might guess, somewhat follows a spectrum. So in, the, in the semantic and science course, I'd say it's not dominated, but it, the computer science students are uh, the greater population middle piece, it's the information technology and web science students. And in the data piece, it's the physical science students. It's the geology and the biology and the electrical engineering and the physics and the astronomy. And then, um, and computer science as well. So in fact, there's this really interesting shifts going on across these courses as they, and the way they're offered, um, partly aligned with our master's program, is that the data science and semantic science are offered in the fall and the X informatics is in the spring, so they can actually come in and take them in data information and knowledge in that order. Um, and a lot of students do that. And so it's, but they also come back in the other direction as well. We're getting people in the information uh, technology area that, that are creeping into data science. And the computer science students are really interesting because, um, just to cut the story short, they're, they're tired of working with trivial problems and fake data. That actually want to come in and get their hands dirty because they're finding out that their evaluations that they have to do for computer science and the significance are really largely meaningless if, the, if they're not working with real data. And so they're really getting serious about this in a, in a really good way. Um, in terms of actual curriculum, then those are the courses. The curriculum, there's, as you might expect, it's informatics and, and data science curricula are all sort of all over the campus. We have a web science and information technology master's program, and soon a PhD program with science concentrations in it. So that's the first in the <coughs> world, I think, IT and web science. We have environmental science with the geoinformatics concentration, and then we have bio, geo, chem, astro, and materials and informatics um, courses taught by a variety of, of faculty in addition to the ones, and, and they're actually um, minors or, or other tracks in their degrees in their different departments. Uh, this year, for some bizarre reason, I agreed to teach GIS for science um, on top of my normal load, which is just turning out to be a fantastic experience because it's all about data science and sort of really teaching them how to handle as much the data as it is just to use a GIS tool. That's sort of the, the, really the art of it now, which I think is really nice. And the two new things coming up, we're actually, um, there's a proposal in for a, a, data, a Master of Science in Data Science and a multidisciplinary PhD program in data and web science. And that, of course, has to go um, through New York State. Now, 
in terms of um, the tension that exists on a campus like ours, um, I don't need to convince you that data science is, is really important and that the workforce is, is undermanned um, and that demand is just going through the roof. And courses like this are going to be in great demand. We're already seeing a lot of interest. And there's a real tension between having it raise a lot of revenue, which master's programs do, versus increased load on faculty, distracting them from other core courses. It is a significant concern on our campus, but I think really on all campuses. And, and again, this is not a training course. This is an education course. And I think that's a really important distinction that I want to draw there. Um, on, in terms of uh, outcomes and evaluation of the impact that these courses and curricula are, are having, I'd say it's anecdotal because um, they've only been going about three, three years now. But anecdotally, certainly our master students, um, their average uh, pay offerings, and these are my, mainly professional masters that go down to New York City and work with banks and commerce, their, their starting salaries are up 10 to 20 percent. And um, one of them got off $120,000, uh, so the highest salary. And, and guess what happens then? All the other master students start coming to us and saying, "Can I take your courses?" You know, because you know, when this when this person got interviewed, they said, "Oh, you have this on your on your uh, transcript," and 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 it's attractive to employers. And so I think this is something we've got to watch for: is this balance between sort of a purely sort of fiscally drawn, uh, fiscally driven approach. So a couple of things on on the day after. And, and I did this deliberately, but I haven't really said it explicitly. It's science and inter interdisciplinarity from the start. That's how all these, all these courses, how this curriculum was developed. And I want to say this because a lot of people ask me, it comes up every time I talk to digital curation people or anyone that says, well, do we, do we, take, a, do we take a scientist to do informatics and sort of tra train them with the technical and how to handle data? Or do we take the technical people, you know, the data librarians, and sort of teach them to do science? I think that's completely the wrong way to look at it. It's the, it's the skill and course, it's the attributes largely of the person. So we've got to do a much better job at identifying who are, what are the characteristics of these people when we start looking at their transcripts and their background and their letters. We've got to be able to sort of see through all the disciplinary um, sort of bias that we have in our students and sort of look for these. Now that brings, uh, look for these interdisciplinary skills. Now this brings just a, a cautionary note, and Kirk mentioned computational science. I would say we, uh, there's a few exceptions, but we largely fail in computational science. We train this new generation, and I, I defy you to find more than maybe one or two computational science departments in the US. We didn't provide an early career and through the tenure track process. They sit in computer science departments, they sit in physics departments, they don't sit in computational science departments. So we've got to think about that. Yeah, these, these guys are a great exception. We've got to think about not just the, the, the initial part of the career, but we've got to get them through the first five or 10 years of their career. And I think it's true in industry as well as in academia. And of course, we must teach methodology and, princi and principles over technology. Um, I know there's a trend, you know, the technology has to be a part of it, there's certain skills that are required. And my view, my vision is that data science is a skill and it's natural for our students. They don't sort of even think about not taking it. It's a skill just like that they know how to use an instrument or they know how to do some coding or they know how to use a piece of software. It's just fundamentally it will be part of how they handle um, their, their careers and their lives. And of course, we're there with, we're, we're, well, we're there. Um, we're struggling with the information piece of this. You know, people deal with information all, all the time, and our, our new generation, of course, is an information generation, and they are learning how to cope with the, the floods of information. But, but really, when we distinguish between information and data, I think we're, we're very far away from that. Um, and then the two um, pieces at the bottom, um, the challenge for education, and from my point of view, is that the team and collaboration aspects are really key. I think we have a few examples where the, all the skills that are needed for data informatics and, and X informatics and data science, semantic science, can reside in a few individuals. And I think it's going to be a long time before we're going to have a lot of individuals. 
And so ultimately, this is going to be a team and a collaborative and a, 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 a multi-person and multi, multiple skills environment. And we're still trying to figure out how to evaluate and, and grade people to give them degrees when they're working in teams and distinguishing their own contributions. And so at RPI, we're, we're starting to think about evaluation 2.0. It's what does that really look like um, for, these, for these completely new people? And um, Bill and I, Bill was, of course, we always have a lot in common he mentioned to me before um, about uh, do we have a theory for data? And the answer is no. We have theories for information. We have lots of theories for knowledge. And, and so we implement those on a very strong basis. So we're sort of backing into the data science piece semi-empirically right now. And I think this is a really, and this is why we combine the education and the research component is we do need um, some more fundamental and foundational uh, thoughts on, and, and let me say on digital data. Because I think analog data, uh, we actually, thanks to many of you in this room, we have, and, and uh, museum curators and so on, we have um, some handle on. Um, and, uh, but, but I think as far as data goes, we're, we're still working. And uh, I'll just finish with this um, as an example of the um, sort of methodological approach that we take for, this is from our semantic e-science course. Um, and the reason I'm showing it is this, this is a development methodology for the semantic e-science applications. Um, it's, you should stare at it a little while. There's some fun boxes on here. There's, only, there's two things I want to point out. One is this is a 13-week graduate course where we basically go through each of these boxes and teach the methodology and students start out learning individual skills and go into group and actually implement this methodology. So that's number one. Number two is over halfway through this iterative cycle, so it's a, it's a spiral um, analogy here, is where technology comes in. And so it's all driven by sort of foundational model-based um, approaches. And the technical students actually find it really hard to, to sort of engage with that, you know, we have this expression, um, it's the, I just want to code. <laughs> and you say, no, 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 no. And of course what they find when they get the foundational principles, the model right, they've thought it through, they've got some vetting, the coding becomes trivial. And they sort of like that and hate that, because some, for some reason they just want to hack. But uh, anyway, that's what I wanted to tell you about. Um, and I think I've made all the relevant points that I wanted to make, so thank you.